This is why I deadass don't do group trips. I don't do girls trips. Every time I travel, I always travel with one person. That's my best friend. Because why I just came back from Cabo and one of the girls did not bring no bread to the trip. So story time on why the fuck I will never do a girls trip again. So mind you, before I even booked the trip, my intuition told me not to go on the trip. Like I was the last person to book. I spoke to my mom. She told me to follow my gut. She told me not to book. But it was one of my homegirl's birthday and I never ever celebrated her birthday with her. So I was just like, I like traveling. Fuck it, I'll pop out to the trip. The reason I wanted to go wasn't because of her though. It was because of the people she was inviting to the trip. So I was just like, if I'm going to go, I'm not going to go if she invites just her friends. I'm going to invite somebody myself. And I did. I invited my man. My man, that's not my man, but he is my man. But that's a whole nother story for next time. And before y'all even say anything, I asked her first before we made the trip to go together because she knows him and we normally hang out together. So she was okay with it. Plus, it's also good to have a male figure around that you can trust because girls like to drink. And he looked out for us the whole trip. So fast forward to Thursday. Before we went on the trip, we left Friday morning at 5 a.m. We all went to my friend's birthday dinner. We're going to call her Keisha. Keisha had her birthday dinner the night before. She invited two other girls, and one of the girls was going on the trip with us. We're going to call the other girl Imani. We all ordering, having a good time. But, like, Imani vibe from, like, the very jump is throwing me the fuck off. Like, she gives, like, pick me, yes man, I'm a fan type of vibe. You know one of those girls that you can peep just follows you around because she just wants to be, like, accepted so bad? Yeah, she was one of those girls. But I'm like, not my friend, not my problem. So she can do whatever the hell she want to do. But one thing about it, I can read a person. And my, I'm never wrong. Every person she brought around me, I told them exactly who they were. And before they even showed them who the fuck they was, I was right. But we ordering, we tasting food. I'm vibing with the girl that's sitting next to me. She didn't go on the trip. But when the bill came, the bill was like $798 or something like that. That's valid for four people. Especially since we went to a nice restaurant. Mind you, if you do the math, it was only $181 per person. My bad, this was the receipt. It was $724. So I put it on my card because like, I didn't really care. Everybody sent me their bread automatically. The other two girls sent me their bread. All of a sudden, her cash app is not working. Her Zelle is not working. Her Venmo is not working. Her PayPal is not working. Her Apple Pay is not working. Talking about, oh, it must be the service. How come everybody's service was great when they sent me my bread? Now it's your turn. Your service is bad. Come to find out, this girl shorted me $46. And I was definitely pissed about it because, girl, I don't even know you for you to be owing me bread. She was like, oh, did you pay yet or can I tap? Girl, obviously you saw me put my card down for the whole bill. That's why everybody sent me the bread. I told her I paid. She showed me she only had $135 in her bank account. Why do you only have $135 in your bank account? We leave tomorrow. So I'm like, maybe she gets paid tomorrow because it was Thursday and we left on a Friday. So she sent me the bread and I got the bread of $135 and she was just like, I owe you $46. So I'm like, okay, thinking she's going to pay me tomorrow because it's Friday. Yeah, I never got that bread. And once I peeped, that's all the money she had in her bank account. Oh, I was tight because she texted me silently. So nobody knew she shorted me the bread. I didn't even tell the birthday girl until like two days into the trip because I didn't want to embarrass her, feel me? So we booked two different packages. So they booked their own package and I booked my own package with my man. So our flights was two different flights, but we were like an hour away from each other. On the flight, I told this boy and I was just like, I promise you, she did not come to the trip with no bread. She shorted me $46. She only had $135 in her bank account. I don't know how much she gets paid tomorrow, but she's not giving me that bread back and I'm already tight. My know, she's older than me and my homegirl, Keisha. But I was like, I'm not gonna let this ruin the trip. It's just $46, I'll swallow it. I'll ask her for the bird after the trip is done. We all land, we all Gucci, everything is good, good vibes. Like I'm letting go of the bread, it's fine. But I already know like I don't like her personality and I don't like her aurora. Like it's something about her is just like throwing me off. So now we're out there for my homegirl birthday. I expect her to get wasted, drunk. I'm out there to take care of her. Bro, I was a mom. I packed everything, everything you could think of. Vitamin C, Advil, Alka-Seltzer. I had Zyrtec, I had... Everything you can think of you would need for a hangover, for stomach problems, for everything, gas X, I had it. And it came in handy because on the first day, we was wheeling my homegirl out in a wheelchair at 7 p.m. because she got wasted. I was the only person that wasn't really drunk, me and my man, because like I, I like to pay attention to things. And I'm happy I am like that because I had to pull my homegirl out the pool and be like, baby, let's go. We're going back to the hotel room because you're done. She was turning up, but she was turning up a little too much. And people was recording, and I don't, you're not going to embarrass my friend. No. However, 
both of them fried their phones. Keisha and Imani, they both fried their phones in the pool. You know why Imani also fried her phone in the pool? Because she also got wasted, but she was being like, she was just following every single thing Keisha did. If Keisha took 10 shots, Imani took 10 shots. If Keisha was dancing on a boy, she found the boyfriend to dance on. For some reason, if Keisha dropped her phone in the pool, Imani just threw her phone in the pool. This is what I mean, like she was a yes man, she was a pick me. So we get to the hotel room and I'm trying to ask the girl that she's rooming with what's their room number. She's too drunk to remember. And my homegirl, she was blacked out drunk. Like she was done for it. Like she was on the bed. She was fried. And I'm like trying to take care of her. Like I'm like, you know, making sure she, I take off her makeup because the pool like fried her makeup. I'm taking off like her bikini top, changing her. I change her into one of my man's shirts. We're like making sure she doesn't throw up. I'm giving her vitamin C. I'm giving her alka seltzer water. And then when she did start throwing up, like we took her to the bathroom and my, my man took care of her the whole time. I even literally sat her up and blew dry her wig because her hair was soaked from the pool and it was so cold in our room. I didn't want her to get sick the next day and it threw us off the trip. So like I'm holding her and I'm blow drying her hair and everything. And her homegirl is just being mad loud. Imani is just being mad loud. Like she's screaming. She's like doing too much. She's like complaining about her phone being fried. I'm like, girl, my friend is drunk right now. Like we'll deal with you later. You're good. I need to worry about her. And all she's talking about is I need to text my man. I need to text my man. Y'all, she was talking about texting her man the whole time. How come your man didn't send you no bread for the trip? And here's T. She slept with somebody on the trip and had them give her $100. Girl, you sold yourself for $100? You slept with somebody for $100? Because that's what it's giving. Because how did the money even come to play? How did he even send you $100? Like, how did he know you were broke? So now I'm getting overwhelmed because my homegirl is like throwing up all over the room. Like, I'm trying to take care of her and this girl is just doing too much. So I'm like, all right, take me to you guys' room and we're going to walk to the room together and we're going to like grab some of her stuff so like I can tie her wig down and stuff like that. So she's just going to sleep in our room. And then when she wake up, she's Gucci because you seem well enough to just go to your room by yourself. You're not throwing up. You're good. So we walk to her room. This girl don't even know where her room is. So now I'm getting frustrated because I'm like, bro, like this is mad irresponsible. Like what if me and my man decide to just leave the pool while you guys were having fun? How are y'all getting back to y'all room? Because this girl couldn't even walk. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to call front desk and I'm going to give them her first and last name because I know it. She didn't even know how to spell my homegirl first and last name. I was like, I'm going to give her the first and last name and I'm just going to figure out what the room number is. And I did. While I'm on the phone, I hang up the phone and I turn around and this girl is in the bathroom. Mind you know, my man is in the bathroom holding my homegirl's hair back while she's throwing up. This girl is in the bathroom with her bikini bottom off. Like, coochie out, butt out, everything in front of my man. Talking about like, oh, I got to pee, I got to pee. Girl, I don't care how drunk you are. If you're drunk enough to, if you're sober enough to walk around and you you know you need to call your man you know you need your fendi shades you know this that or third you're well aware you need a charger then you're well aware that you should not be pulling away pulling down your underwear in front of my man like what so now i'm i'm livid like i already don't like you now i really don't like you so i walk in the bathroom i told my my man I'm like let's get you know her out the bathroom like i'm trying not to show how heated i was and i was like let her go pee once she finished use the bathroom we went back in the bathroom and i helped my homegirl go back on the toilet so she continued like throwing it all up and i start crying because i'm so pissed and this girl had left to go you know go back to her room or whatever the hell she was trying to do i think she wanted to go get a charger not to mention she took my charger with her and i was the only person with an iphone 15 everybody else had the regular cord i was the only one with a ubc cord and i was the only one with all the information on my phone for my trip and she took our key card which would have been an extra $60 if it was lost. And she did lose our key card. So around 2 in the morning, my friend Soba up. And I we walked to her room because I wrote down their room number. And I'm like, oh, where's the key card? Where's my charger? She's like, oh, I didn't take it. Girl, yes, the fuck you did. And the reason why I know is because I'm mad prepared for, like, too prepared every time I'm going on vacation. Especially if I'm going out the country. I unpack everything in the drawers. I take out the chargers. I plug one in one side of the bed and I plug the other in, a, in the other side of the bed. Before I even step outside, I unpack. So that's how I know you did take my charger because you were sitting right on the bedside where my charger was at. And I left my room with a charger there and you left my room with my, my charger gone. So who took my charger? She's like, oh, I didn't take it. I didn't take your key card. Girl, yeah, I know what I put. I know where I put my stuff. I'm the only one. So you think I'm going to listen to a drunk person talking about you didn't take my stuff? So now I'm getting heated as hell because my phone is on 5%. And I told her that. Y'all, she's talking about, oh, can I please use your phone? I just want to text my man to tell him I'm okay. Like, please, please, please. Girl, I'm on 5%. I need my phone so I can book my cab back home. 
to the airport when we're leaving by tomorrow and I don't have a charger and none of y'all have the same charger I need for my phone and you're, you're worried about texting your man to make sure that you're okay but this is getting long so I'm gonna come back for part two so part two on why the fuck I would never go on another girl's trip if y'all haven't seen part one y'all gotta tap in because there's a lot going on so what happened after this girl lost my key card and my charger? I had to go pay for a new one. And I had to beg people for another charger. Like I was walking around the resort at 2 a.m. begging anybody if they had a USB-C, if they had a USB-C. And I finally found two guys that would give me one. Like I literally posted shout out to the guys who gave me a charger. Because if it wasn't for them, I would have been fucked. Everything was closed. Like there was no way I was going to get a charger. And I needed my phone by 7 a.m. that morning. So now fast forward to day two. Yeah, all of that happened day one. This is day two of what the fuck happened in Cabo. So I decided to be a good friend. I went to their room door to knock on the door to wake them up to make sure they still, you know, they got breakfast or whatever the case may be. And we ended up finding them literally right before they was about to walk down some stairs. And I told them like, y'all got to go book a reservation time for like all the excursions you put. Like even though you paid for it, you guys still have to go reserve a time for it. So we walked down together and she wanted to go to this party boat that I booked for her like me and my man to go on and the other girl she booked her ticket by herself but i was so drained for fucking taking care of her the day before i was just like bro i'm not going on this party boat like i'll swallow the 200 dollars. i really don't care i don't want to go on this party boat plus you guys both don't have a fucking phone and you want to leave the resort with no phone your other girl only got nine dollars to her name and like who's going to take care of y'all because i'm not doing it today and my man is not doing it to get today like we're tired so she's like nah like i want to go like it's my birthday like i'm not trying to sit around here and do nothing da 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 and I'm letting her know, I'm like, you understand that I'm not coming with you. And it'll be really irresponsible for you to go off the resort with no phone and your homegirl only got $9, right? She's like, she don't care. She'll figure it out. She'll find her way back. So I'm like, you know what? This is my friend. Like, I, I don't like arguing. I'm like, you know, this is your life. If you want to do it, go ahead. But my big thing is like, how the fuck are you going to get back? If I book your Uber there, how are you going to get back? I ask, so I'm like, girl, do you even know the address to the resort? She said, no. I'm like, <laughs> I love my friend, but she sometimes she be tweaking. Sometimes you can't really like argue with people. You just gotta go let them be. So I'm like, all right, fine. I'll get you an Uber. Go ahead. It's your birthday. Go off, sis. Figure it out. And I just went and I just did what the hell I wanted to do. Like I just went. I found my own group of people. I met this pretty girl right here. <laughs> like this is all like a group of people oh, that I met. Oh, and these, these people are so amazing. So like while they left, I didn't even know what time they got back. I don't know if they got back. But, like, I know my friend, she went to, like, somebody in Mexico to go get her phone at least turned on. She paid, like, $100 for it. And she ended up getting her phone turned on. I said, babes, do not fry me. Because, like, what the fuck was I supposed to do? Wait in my room until you came came back from God knows where to hang out with you? There's one thing about it, like, I'm that friend that I'm, I can't fake shit, bro. Like, if I'm unhappy about something, I'm gonna let you know. If I don't like somebody, oh, I'm gonna let you know. If you piss me off, oh, I'm going to let you know. Like, if you think I'm gonna sit here and be miserable, oh, you're fucking fried. We don't have to talk the whole fucking trip. I'm gonna have a grand time. I'm a great person. People love me. I'm gonna make new friends. And I'm not saying this because I had nothing against my homegirl at all. Like, I love her. For infinity into infinity. We both have two different personalities. Like, she's the wild card and I'm the mom. But it, it just tends to work. And we're the type of people that, like, yes, we have, like, disagreements, but we always seem to talk it out and work it out. And that's exactly what we did. So that night, after she texted me, I sent her a long paragraph because I was fucking tight, bro. I was like, me and Sean waste the whole night making sure you don't choke on your own vomit. I guess your birthday, bro, but since you've been here, you've been third wheeling the shit out of me. I've been making sure you've been good from the jump, and I'm not saying that shit like you owe me shit because I'm just a genuine friend. But at the end of the day, bro, I'm not the type of friend that's going to fake it with you. If I feel away, I'm going to tell you and stand on that gang like you was fucking blacked out drunk, and I was crying because I was fucking overwhelmed with all the shit you had going on yesterday. And yeah, I'm going to expose this bitch fucking her little stripper name. Nutella fucking pulled her panties down in front of my man i ran on two hours of sleep and no food no nothing you were so busy worried about a boat you didn't even book your excursions for the time tomorrow never in my life had i had so much problem in a fucking girl shit bro and she shorted me 46 dollars like i didn't use your government what you gonna do fight me about it i don't like you i said it before i'll say it again i said it all trip i don't like you so the next day my friend texted me she was just like you know what girl me and you gonna talk about it in person because like the problem is clearly not between us it's definitely a miss communication between us the the, I have, the only problem i have it have with is her fucking bum ass friend the one the girl she brought here with no money the one who's who's a fucking pick me a follower 
the one who who fucking pulled her panties down in front of my man she's my problem so the next day we had atv riding we went there we got there together whatever the case may be and my friend pulled me aside she spoke to me about it and she was just like you know what she, her frustration is not with me she's just very frustrated because the girl came with no money and she's been breaking bread on the girl since she got here and it's her birthday trip and like there's a lot of stuff that she wants to do with me and my boyfriend because like me and my boyfriend her is like really good friends but she doesn't want to tag her along and then spend the bread on her too but i was like girl you better than me because i would have had her ass bed bound go on fucking time out in the fucking hotel room and think about what the fuck you did fuck you coming out to mexico with no fucking bread but she i guess she was just so concerned about like you know her friend like being upset with her and i guess i understand that because like at the end of you sleeping in a room with her this out of third but as we're talking her friend comes up to me she was like girl what's the problem you have with me the reason why she came up to me so hostile is because me and my friend was talking about the situation with her like texting and the girl i guess went through my friend's phone while my friend was in a shower because she asked my friend if she can you know text her man on her phone she read all of our messages of me talking shit about her girl i don't give a fuck i'll tell you that shit to your face and i did I said, you're mad immature. You came out here with no money. You put your panties down in front of my man. You're a pick me. You're a sloppy drunk. You have no mind of your own. And you're fucking 24. Fuck is you talking about? Like, that's why I'm tight. That's my problem with you. You lost my key card. You lost my charger. Do, do I need to continue? And she still wasn't fucking getting it. Now it's time for us to go. And she would just say, oh, we'll talk about it when we, like, come back. I'm like, girl, I don't got nothing to say to you. Then she said some slick shit. And my man heard. And she would just say, you know what, Khalid? Don't just don't leave it alone. Because, like, I was doing good. But she was fr fucking frying me. You think I'm gonna fucking argue with a bum? Go get your money up. Leave me alone. Because I came with two thousand dollars in cash and five bands in my bank account. You think I fucking? You think I? You think I can't? I never cared. I can extend my trip if I want to for another two days. Okay. Go worry about how the fuck you're getting back home after the trip. Who's picking up from the airport? So we're doing our ATV riding, whatever the case may be. We had a great time. Now it's time for us to like head back to the hotel, and it's like. I'm trying not to avoid my homegirl, but it's not because I'm avoiding her. It's because I don't want nothing to do with her clown-ass friend, bro. Because I know, like, she's just going to piss me off. Like, her whole energy is going to piss me the fuck off. So I'm like, we just going to call it quits. We're going to separate or whatever the case may be. But I continue texting my homegirl. And I told her, like, I, it, it's really her. So I was just like, it's the $46. It's the immaturity. It's one to text her man knowing my phone was on 5%. Why the fuck would I use my last bit of battery on your man? Then he blowing on my phone and my man phone, her pulling her underwear down in front of my man, losing her key card, not having fun. That's too much. Her whole aurora just pisses me off. She just blows my mood. Like I said, you're better than me. I was leaving bitches in the hotel room. If I didn't have, like, I didn't spend all this money to be limited. Fuck out of here. Like, I didn't come to this hotel to be limited because somebody didn't have money. Because I've been having mad fun since I've been here. Yes, me and you had a little bit of confusion, but that had nothing to do with me and you. It had everything to do with your homegirl. Cause like I said, me and my homegirl, we talk it out. We 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 locked in. Like you know what I mean. Like I I'm gonna tell her how it is and what's up. And I knew she read our text messages, and that's why I, that's exactly why I sent that shit again. Your homegirl's the problem, not you. Tell her. And I said I was like I don't like her, and she can read it. She could read this again. Since you wanna go through people's phones and shit like that. So day four of Cabo. This is our last day, and I'm like trying to convince my homegirl to just leave that girl in the room. Like come jet skiing with us, come to dinner with us. You know what I mean? Like. She'll be fine by herself for a couple hours. Like, go find some new friends. It's not that deep. You want to be broke and be on the resort? Go ahead. They got free food. It's all inclusive. They got free drinks. She will be okay. But my friend is just, like, so big on, like, she doesn't want to, you know, leave her by herself. And I'm trying to tell a girl, misery loves company. Like, why? if she was a real friend, she would have told you, go have fun. Go have your birthday dinner. I don't have fun. So I'm going to stay here. That's what I'm saying. Like, she wasn't a real friend for not communicating. She didn't have no money with you. Like, me and my best friend, I make way more money than her. And I'm not saying that to flex or anything, but it's, like, our version of half and half. I would never tell her, like, oh, the hotel is $2,000. You put $1,000, I put $1,000. Because that's not half and half, knowing how much money we both make. If I make a certain amount and she only makes a certain amount, then I'm going to put down $1,200 and she's going to put down $800, if you know what I mean. That's 50-50. You know what I mean? But that's because we communicate with each other. Stop bringing random bitches on these trips out the country, out, out the state, whatever the case may be. And you barely know these bitches. You need to know their occupation. You need to know what their bank accounts be looking like. Like, I knew this girl was a bum from dinner when she shorted me my money. Like, there's certain things you need to know about people before you take them out the country. Y'all be so, like, I feel like people be so quick to want to show off that they're outside with a big group. Big group starts problems. The big, the more people you have around you, the more things you got to worry about. And people don't understand that. I'd rather have one solid friend than a whole bunch of snakes around me, bro. 
And I peep shit so fast. Like, you cannot do no grimy shit to me because I pay attention to a lot of shit. Everybody be like, Kalia, why are you so serious? Why you look mean? I promise you, nobody ever fucks around with me. Nobody plays with me because I pay attention. And I'm going to fucking figure that shit out before you even try to play it. Baby, I invented a game. You can't play the game. I made it. But I had a great time in Cabo because me and my man did everything I wanted to do. All I'm trying to say is less friends, less problems. Okay, this is the last video I'm about to make about it because I just see like a little bit of confusion in the comments. This girl showed me her bank account. It only had $135 in it the day before our trip to Cabo. I already posted that receipt in the video. She never gave me my $46 back, bro. Everybody keeps saying like how is she a stripper and she don't got no money. She's not a stripper because she called herself Nutella. Her actual name actually gives grandma. Like, she has a grandma-ass first name. I'm not even gonna hold you. I saw a lot of people saying, oh, was it the girl in the green bathing suit on my highlights in my story? It was not her. The video of you saw me posting in the little group, it was not any of those girls in the group. Did I post her in my highlights? Yes. If y'all really want to be nosy enough, y'all need to go back and listen to a story time again and put two and two together and really play detective. Because she's dead in my, my highlights for like a quick two seconds. Not even gonna hold you. Some people were saying like, oh, your friend knew she shorted you, like... So your friend probably told her, like, you be the one that be taking up the bill, da 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 My friend had no idea if she shorted me the bread because the girl texted me privately while we were at dinner. Like, my friend did not know any, like, she did not know she shorted me the bread until, like, two days into the trip. And that's when I told her, like, I sent the screenshots out to her, like, yo, that girl that I shorted me money. And she's broke, like, she don't have no bread. Everybody was saying, like, oh, did she get her phone fixed? Up to this day, this bitch don't got her phone fixed. You know why? Because she don't have any money. The whole trip to Cabo, she did not get her phone fixed. My friend ended up paying somebody $100. Like, my homegirl paid somebody $100 so somebody can fix her phone. They got her phone to turn on, and her phone had cracks in the back, and they got her shit to work. So I'm pretty sure if that girl gave them $100, they would have got her phone to work because her phone didn't have any cracks. A lot of people were saying, how did she get home if she didn't have no money? Well, my friend, little stinker butt, picked, picked, you know, picked her up from the airport, and she's going to ask my homegirl, like, oh, is he dropping me home too? Bitch. Everything we done fucking did for you. You, you want to ride home too? So my friend was just like, bro, you got him out of your own at this point. Go ask him if he could drop you home. So she was just like, oh, can you drop me home? And he ended up dropping her home. But guess what? The bitch didn't even say thank you. Somebody said, oh, why didn't you fight her? Why didn't you fight her? First of all, I never fought in my fucking life. I'm not fighting somebody that's like 165 pounds. I'm 107 soaking wet. Are you dumb? And fighting somebody on my first day of trip? I got my hair done. I paid for that. I paid for my lashes. I paid for my nails. My bread. You think I'm going to fight somebody and fuck all my shit up the day of the, my first day of the trip? You're fried. Talking about, oh, fight her because, like, oh, she pulled your pulled her underwear down in front of your man. My man don't want that, bitch. Like, this man has been obsessed with me for the last four years, bro. We broke up, and now we, we talking again. Like, come on. Come on. Somebody was like, oh, I would have fought her to get my money back. Bitch, if I really want to my, get my money back, I'm taking a small claims court. I'm suing your ass for pain and suffering. I got that text message saying you owe me $46. Oh, I'm going to take your ass to court. I got your first and last name. You forgot you told me that shit while you was drunk, stink a butt. I want the $46 that you showed me during dinner. The money back for my charger you lost. The money back for the key card I had to pay for. All of that shit. I want all of that shit. And then some people were just like, oh, what's her boyfriend on the trip? Like, why didn't he give her money? Her boyfriend was not on the trip. That's not what I said. She kept trying to use everybody's phone to call her boyfriend, call her boyfriend. And we're like, bro, you calling your boyfriend so much. You so concerned of this boyfriend. This man is making sure you're okay. Tell that man to send you some bread. I said, tell that man to send you some bread. My man said, tell that man to send you some bread. My friend said, tell that man to send you some bread. Tell that man to send you some bread. Hello? He was so fucking concerned. Why he ain't send you no money? Mind you know, she did not apologize to my homegirl at all about not having bread. Not no, I'm sorry. Not no, I'll pay you back. Not no, nothing. All her excuse was, not everybody got money like you. This is why you don't take bitches out the country. And I knew she was kind of fucking slow when we was at dinner. And she was just like, oh, I was like, oh, there's an all white party. Did you bring a white outfit? She was just like, no, I'm just going to Amazon it when I get there. I said, bitch, what are you talking about? You're going to Amazon it to Mexico? She said, yeah, I got prime. I'm like, bitch, are you fried? Because you only drink half your drink. I'm confused. She was like, oh, yeah, I did it before. You Amazon some shit to Mexico before? Then 20 minutes into the conversation, she was just like, yeah, she never really been out the country. All she been to for real is Jamaica and Canada. Then how the fuck did you Amazon shit? Some How you Amazon some shit to fucking Mexico? You fucking liar. And then other people were saying like, oh, like, is my homegirl and her still friends? Unfortunately. But like I said, not my friend, not my problem. I hope my homegirl posts her story time so like the algorithm could put two and two together. 
And when she does, y'all all just tell her to cut that bitch off because like she's not listening to me. At the end of the day, like everybody is not like the same. Like me, like I, it, it doesn't take a lot for me to want to cut you the fuck off. I don't like being played it with in my face at all. None. My other friend, she's a very understanding person and she's more of like, I don't know, like she's very understanding. But she's also one of those girls that's going to tell you, like, well, girl, like, come on, bro. Like, why, don't do that shit again. Da, da, da. But I feel like with somebody like that girl that we fucking brought, she doesn't need no girl. Come on, don't do that again. She needs to get cut the fuck off. Because, like I said, she didn't think about how you felt for her to come to your birthday trip with no bread. So don't fucking sit here and think about her fucking feelings. Let that bitch the fuck go. There's so much other genuine people out in this world. Do not waste your time hanging with a bimbo. I blocked that girl on everything before I even fucking got back to the States. She wasn't going to fucking notice anyway because she don't got a fucking phone. But with the amount of shares I've been seeing, I'm pretty sure this shit going to end up on somebody's Twitter, Instagram, whatever the fuck. And she's going to fucking see it. She's going to know somebody. Trust me, she's going to know somebody. And everybody like, oh, you not scared, you not scared. I don't give a fuck, okay? Because there's nothing I said I fucking lied about because I had the receipts for fucking everything in my video. And I asked my homegirl if I could post the situation. I told her, like, I'm not even, like, trying to be on no funny shit but this is a crazy ass story and she agreed and she watched the videos and she laughed about it and if you now finding my fucking page just know i'm queen of i said what the fuck i said i'm not taking shit back i stand on fucking business and i was never scared of nothing never cared never did i say what the fuck i want to say it is what it is if you don't want me to talk about you don't do no dumb shit around me i wouldn't have to talk about you and believe we call bitches like her chicken heads them have no sense whatsoever so I may never care to argue with you. Fuck out of here. Are you dumb?